A ship is built for a reason. Always a distinctive purpose for the vessel is in mind. In the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Schooner St. Rock, or St. Roche, is no exception. Many ships, including the celebrated 1921 Canadian gaff rig schooner, the Blue Nose, was built for speed. The St. Rock was not built for speed. Made from beams nearly twice the normal size, thick copper plating, and a coating of Australian iron bark, the ship's top speed was only five knots. During the first half of the 20th century, some ships were built for enjoyment, like the Canadian-owned Empress of Britain cruise ship, considered the most comfortable and luxurious vessel of its time. There was no comfort to be found on the St. Rock. The first word that comes to mind is crowded. The thing that becomes a nuisance. In rough weather, we would tie ourselves into our bunks. Oh yeah, it was the way the ship was built. It was like a bathtub. You'd roll so much, you would roll right out of the bunk. So, what exactly was it about this sluggish, uncomfortable schooner that wobbled precariously with every wave that made it a Canadian national treasure? Why was the RCMP St. Rock decommissioned into the Vancouver Maritime Museum in 1959? And why was it designated a National Historic Site of Canada shortly after? The answers to these questions may be found in her nickname, dubbed by maritime archaeologist James Delgado for he calls her the Arctic Workhorse. The schooner-rigged St. Rock was commissioned by the RCMP to operate in one of the world's harshest environments. It was built at Burrard Dry Dock Company in North Vancouver and was launched in May 1928. The St. Rock was a sturdy ship, 104 feet in length, 27 foot beam, and a rounded hull which allowed the St. Rock to overcome the crushing pressure of ice. She was built to patrol the Canadian Arctic, supply the RCMP detachments along the coast, and in effect serve as a floating detachment. In addition to policing duties, she was used to transport the sick and injured to hospital, collect customs duties and taxes, deliver mail and government payments, handle hunting licenses, and maintain vital statistics. During the winter, while frozen in ice, the ship served as a base camp for officers to conduct patrols, bringing with them a system of justice and goodwill to the native population. But none of this gives any indication as to why the rugged Arctic workhorse has gained so much fame. So let's have a brief look at some of her accomplishments. From 1940 to 1942, she completed the Northwest Passage from west to east, only the second ship ever to do so. In 1944, the St. Rock made the return voyage through harsh Arctic waters east to west in only 86 days. And in 1950, the St. Rock became the first ship ever to circumnavigate North America. The St. Rock was decommissioned in 1954 and eventually placed into the Vancouver Maritime Museum and it can still be viewed today. Uh, the museum does a wonderful job in its presentation and also has a virtual element to it where you can pilot the St. Rock through the Northwest Passage. Unfortunately, the St. Rock, though built to withstand the most devastating conditions on Earth, is subject to wood rot and we are looking at uh, raising funds for its uh, maintenance and restoration.